Hi there and a very warm welcome to this video. This video is an overview over my OSL splat texture that I wrote. And since it's a bit more complicated than any other OSL script that I wrote before, I make this video so you can go over it and see the sort of a tutorial how to set up this texture. So while setting up this workflow, there are multiple hurdles you will face and I'll show you how to pass them. So first of all, if you bring in your script, so let's do this real quick, just, just go to any OSL texture and paste in the code and compile, you will see that all those values are starting up at zero and this will make your splat texture not show up in the viewer. So I prepared the texture with the right values you can start with. So just take a good look at those and copy them to your scene file. Next, we will populate those slots here. So first of all, you need a background. And the background can be anything, a texture or a RGB spectrum. Anything you can pipe in here will work. So let's just use a texture here real quick and then just make it look a bit nicer like this. You could also use a projection node. This is not necessary, but it's good to have it in here so you know what you're doing. So for me, I'm just piping in a texture projection that is set to UV. So I know that I will use the UV sets from the object. Next, and what's most important is the splat map and the splat alpha. You have to use a very certain procedure to, to get it working. So first of all, get an image texture in here and just load something that I prepared. So I have this biohazard sign here that I want to load and then just pipe it into the splat map. Now you don't see anything right now because it's missing the alpha. So I'll duplicate that and somehow that duplicated also the OSL texture, which I don't want and go into the splat alpha. And of course I need to load the alpha then. So now we have this decal ready here. You can also see that it's not doing anything big. So it's just as if you would stack two textures upon one another. And this has mainly to do with the way the setup works. The UVs are handled inside of the OSL texture and not the texture itself. So what you need to do is tell this texture to um, transfer the UV data with the stream to this OSL node. And you can do that by going into a projection. And I use that projection for both of these and set it to OSL delayed UVs. That makes the UVs go with the object here. Now there's a bug where the image disappears here, but this is not very important. So you already seen what you loaded in here and you get this. Now this is still the wrong display. So that's not how it's supposed to look like. So the next step you take is to go in both textures and set the wrap around mode to black color. And now you can see that you're getting what this texture here is intended. So let's go through a couple of those settings here. First of all, it's the main scale and it does what it should do. If you up the number, it scales everything smaller and you get more decals here. So let's leave it as five maybe. And then you have the seat. So if you're not satisfied with the way the decals look, you can change the seat and get different arrangements. So you can play along with that as long as you like. And you have seat values for different settings down here too. So you can just change those if you're not satisfied with the outcome. Then you have the scale. So you can scale per decal. So you can have random scale per decal. Also the same goes for the random rotation. So you have a rotation angle to and from. 
So you can say from 0 to 360. And then we have, oh, that's not 360, so 360. And then we have an angle step, which can be really nice too. So if you only want to rotate your um, decal by 90 degree increments, you can do that. So now it's just always um, turned 90 degree. And it's not very uh, visible here because it's a triangle. But if you set it to 60, you can see that it's doing wh what it's supposed to do because every side of the triangle is 60 degrees offset. So you can see it's looking in 60 degree increments into both directions. All right. So then we have a brightness value slider. So you can slide your brightness up and down for certain decals or all of them by pushing both of those sliders down. Um, and there's also a random seed, so you can change the seed if you're not happy with the way the decals darken down. So let's just change the seed here. Then we have a U variation, so you can change the U of those decals, so everyone gets a different color. And then we also have a saturation that does the same thing. So you can desaturate your decals. And last but not least, you have a transparency. So your alpha will then just change the transparency based on also a random value. So if I put that to zero here, you can see that some of the decals become transparent or more transparent. And you can change your seat here too. So other decals will become more transparent. All right, so this is a rundown through the settings. So in the future, there might be some iterations on the script where I maybe let you position random uh, textures, random different textures per tile here, or even do some other stuff that I haven't thought about yet. But the cool thing is if you want to use different textures right now, you can just get the whole setup here, duplicate that, and use this one here as a background in the new one. And if we do so, and then of course change the seed here, so we get a different distribution, you can see that you now can use another set on top of the old set. So let's see what looks nice, maybe something like that. And of course you can change your values. For example, if you don't want to have transparency and don't want to use that strange U offset, so you have your old one and maybe just make the old one smaller so it appears like more in the background. And the new one on top of that, you can play around and hopefully create a lot of nice textures with that. Finally, a small disclaimer. I'm not a very experienced programmer, so it might be that the script that I wrote isn't as efficient as it could be. So if you are versed in OSL and if you are a good programmer and find some mistakes I did in there, just contact me uh, or even better, just fix them and then just let me know so I can update the script and uh, re-upload it so people have the best version available. So the last thing to say is thank you very much for watching and have fun with the script. Bye!